Right, December 3rd, to, to actually December 4th, 2006. December 3rd has passed into history. Thank God. <laughs> Thank Christ. We watched the most horrible show in history. I know a lot of people want to hear about Cade Matthews' Pinnacle show last night. That was WrestleMania 19 <laughs> compared to this fucking debacle of a just a bastardization of... <sighs> in the past 24 hours, we saw a shitty indie show, we had a shitty meal, and then we watched a shitty pay-per-view. I saw three shows this week. I cannot decide which was the shittiest show I've ever seen. It was There was the one-hour impact in which Russo shoved two hours of shit into 40 minutes. There was Cade Matthews' show, which, God bless Cade, and it was... Horrible. I, I cannot. I cannot blame Caden for this. This was just a disaster on every level. Almost. And Caden knows we didn't die. Caden's well aware. We'll talk about this in days to come. And then tonight's ECW pay per view, just the pinnacle. Just wrong, we, wrong word there. But now, here, here's what happened: we watched a public execution on pay per view and had to pay forty fucking dollars for it. I paid twenty nine cents a minute to waste three hours. It wasn't even three hours. It was two hours and seventeen minutes of my life wasted for forty fucking dollars tonight. Bullshit. Before we get into this any further, we have a special guest tonight. So hold on for a moment, and we will bring him onto the line. Hopefully, everything works here. This is the sort of night where everything would go horrendously wrong. Everything already did go horribly wrong tonight. So we watched the show. We watched ECW. Yeah. <laughs> Mark? Yeah? You're on the air, buddy. Hey, Mark. I'm, am I on the air right now? You're on the air right now. Great. That's that's fantastic for everyone. You sound excited. Let me let me introduce you to everybody. This is our buddy Mark. He <laughs> he has come to two of these shows. Mark Mark moved here from New Jersey. He yeah. he is in a right. band, Dismember yeah. the Body. That you got to change that name immediately. That the, the word "dismember" has been soiled. It, it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I I didn't even put two and two together, but yeah. You were a you were a huge ECW fan back in the day. You moved here to Seattle, and we have since taken you to two pay per views. Yeah. And they happen to be Taboo Tuesday and this ECW pay per view. No, no, it was uh, Cyber Sunday. Cyber Sunday. I'm sorry. TV what did I say? You said yeah, Taboo that Tuesday. That's, sorry, that was a year ago. Mark, you, you, you harbor a deep resentment towards the ECW brand. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit oh, about that? Well, you, dude, you know, like, ECW back in the day it was just violent and crazy, and now it's just like SmackDown Jr. It is, like, in the, fact. The shittiest show on television. Like, ugh, it's on the Sci-Fi Network. That's, that's fun. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they got a vampire. That's cool. They do, in fact, have a vampire. <laughs> vampire involved in the best match tonight, as we all know. We'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a moment. <laughs> now, when did you first see ECW? You were a fan growing up, and you were a fan of the Barbarian. And oh uh, uh, yeah, who else? I, I didn't even know. I didn't even remember the Barbarian until you mentioned him. Who are we talking about? We, we, we were just listing stars in the early '90s WWF. And Skinner. Ask, Skinner. Yeah, You're a big fan Skinner, of Skinner. Skinner was the one that I really liked. You know. <laughs> He was from the swamp. <laughs> he was a alligators, I guess. I don't know. What kind of gimmick is that? He was from the That's swamp. That's pretty much it, actually. He was Skinner. Now, you, you got into wrestling, and you watched a bunch of wacky stuff when you were a child. And then how were you introduced to ECW? Uh, well, you know, it was uh, on at random times. <laughs> you know, you never really knew when it was come on. But uh, one of my friends... I was like, hey, you got to watch this wrestling because I know you're watching, you know, WWF back when it was WWF, you know. <laughs> They're like, yeah, hey, you know, check this out. It's it's way more brutal. And I watched it and I was like, wow, this, this is ridiculous because they didn't really plan out matches. Like, one match would happen and then somebody would run in and start fighting with somebody else and the ref would just come in and ring the bell and it would just keep going. That's it true. Was amazing. Yeah. It was amazing. You've you know, never seen you anything like this before. out there doing flips and crazy shit, <laughs> nonstop craziness. And then they bring it back, and as soon as I heard they were bringing it back, I kind of groaned. That's, and then, they, they have brought it back. It is a watered-down version. Some of the, the great stars are gone. There's no New Jack. Yeah, where's New Jack? That guy ruled. He couldn't wrestle anything, but he was excellent. He, he was. He, he's, with, his, with his shopping cart full of weapons. What did you think of the first ECW pay-per-view when they came back? Uh, which one? The first one-night stand? The first one-night stand. Last year. Yeah, it was all right. I don't really remember it, but, you know, it, 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 
was way better than what ECW has become. But what did you think of the second One Night Stand this past <laughs> June? <laughs> that one was uh, quite lame. <laughs> like, super lame. You know, RVD won the, won the belt. That's, he did win the belt at that one, right? That's right, yeah. I don't know. I'm if I recall correctly. I'm not a yeah. like you guys. But, uh, yeah, that was good. And then, you know, he got busted for dr- drug charges, and there went that. It was all went, downhill. That, that was pretty much the death of the new ECW. You know, I, it was. I see it as, like, it's RVD's fault. He's an <laughs> asshole. Fuck him. <laughs> there you wow. go. Now, you also went to the Hardcore Homecoming show. Was it Was it the one this past it was, June? It was uh, November Rain. Oh, November so Rain. Is, so, I guess it was in November. I don't really remember, but I guess. I'm going to assume it was November last year rain, then. It probably was then. And how was that show? Oh, well, I don't remember a lot of it, uh, so it couldn't <laughs> Mark, have been Mark that does good. a lot of drinking. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we were we were kind of drunk, but uh, Lance Storm came out at the end. That was the big surprise. Tell us the Lance Storm story. <laughs> well, you know, it's uh, just, inc- just incredible as P.J. Polacco or whatever his real name is. I don't know. Um, him versus uh, that Lynn character. Jerry Lynn? Is. Yeah, that guy. In a cage match, you know, it's boring as hell, whatever. Um, <laughs> lights go out, typical ECW fashion, and, uh, you know, we're all like, hey, who's going to come out to the ring? And Lance Storm appear- appears in the ring, and, like, I start going crazy, and, like, a couple seconds later, I just looked at one of my friends, and I'm like, why am I going crazy? It's fucking Lance Storm. <laughs> and like, who gives a shit about him? <laughs> and, and what are you saying tonight after this pay-per-view is over? Oh, I wish Lance Storm was there. <laughs> <laughs> That's for damn sure. I, I would, I would, uh, I would love to to see Lance Storm nowadays. Yeah, okay. let's talk a little bit about this pay per view. How much time do you have here, Mark? Uh, I have plenty of time. Well, we're gonna. <laughs> have you been drinking since I saw you? Uh, no, no, not you, at all. I'm actually no... making muffins right now. Ooh, muffins. Oh, well, don't let us stop you. Yeah, you, you can go ahead and keep... We heard, a, we heard some sort of weird click, and I thought maybe you were popping open a beer or something like that. No. God, I wish I had one. Well, let's just ask you this question. How would you, how would you rate this, this ECW pay-per-view now that it's over? A thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumbs in the middle? I, I don't know, like an F-. minus. <laughs> I don't do thumbs, you know? <laughs> it would be, uh, I don't know, all my fingers down. <laughs> We're not a big, uh, however that works out, I don't know. Not a big fan of this particular show here. Mark's not yeah, down with a thumbs. Uh, oh, CM Punk getting eliminated first when he's pretty much the only cool guy in the match. That's, you you were you were expecting or you were hoping for a CM Punk win? <laughs> well, I knew CM Punk wasn't going to win. What are you kidding me? <laughs> he's just bringing Lashley, and two weeks in, he's champ. Not a Hooray. big fan. Not a big fan of Blaster Lashley. No, he can kiss my ass. Well, let's let's run down this uh, pay per view. As as everybody here is well aware, they had two matches announced. There were two matches announced for this pay per view. You went to the WWE dot com website, and they had a a screen with two matches and a giant black gr- or a gray area underneath that was just blank. Yeah. And uh, they ended up amazingly. I believe there were six matches on this show. No, I don't think any of it was really planned out. I think everybody just showed up and they're like, yeah. Hey. <laughs> Go wrestle. I, I, I think they're, they're Matt made... Stryker versus Balls Mahoney, that was a choice match. <laughs> yeah. Just put those two morons in the ring together and see what happens. <laughs> made tons of sense. Now, we did we did open up this, this uh, show with the first of the two matches. It was Eminem versus the Hardys. It was supposedly one night only. And they yeah. get... They get... And, uh, yeah, are either of those teams part of ECW? Like, I don't know. The answer to that would be no. Who knows? The answer is nobody knows anything that's going on because <laughs> you, you've got uh, Johnny Nitro is on Raw. Yeah. Johnny yeah, Nitro and guy. and Mercury together are on SmackDown. That seems to be what's going on. Matt Hardy's on mm-hmm. SmackDown. Jeff Hardy's on Raw, but as a team, they're on ECW. Mm. And this was apparently one night only, but I have a feeling both teams are going to stay together. So false advertising. Uh, but. Well, you know, Hardy's. Yeah, they were good back in the day. Matt, Matt's kind of fat now. You know, <laughs> he's a little, really he's a little fatter. That's true. You can't really, they're not really pulling off the stunts so good anymore. He's kind of looking fat. Get a little old and fat now, and they're uh, <laughs> getting 
His old age is setting in. Well, he's... Then that other, the other team, that the Eminem, you know, I just started watching wrestling again, whatever, because my TV doesn't work. It only gets the CW, so I, I, suffer, that... through, I suffer through SmackDown every week. There is the target audience for SmackDown, the people who only have one channel. Yeah, yeah. that's you're being cursed by God. Your TV gets <laughs> one fucking channel, and it's the CW, so you can watch SmackDown every single yeah, week. Yeah, and is there any other show on the CW? I don't even know. What else? I I don't couldn't, couldn't name one. I couldn't name Who one cares? show. Who gives a shit about the CW? <laughs> no one. <laughs> These guys had a 23 minute match. There were three hot tags. Is that how long it was? Oh yeah, 23 uh, minutes. They got the felt, heat. It felt longer. They got the heat twice, three yeah. times, three times. I'm sorry. There were yeah. three hot tags, and 18 million things happened. This was <laughs> this was actually a decent open to the show, but it went too long. Yeah, at one point, everyone jumped over the top rope except for the referee. And if it had been like the old ECW, the referee would have jumped over the top rope. <laughs> that top is for goddamn sure. That is true. Because that happened at they, one of the classic ECW pay-per-views that I remember. They were here in Georgia, in Augusta, <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> that, was a, that was a great plan. There were, there were, approximately, Georgia. There were approximately 2,000 people in the building. Uh, the majority of them appear to have paid... To hate this product. Yeah, they paid to fall asleep or walk around. Yep. Walk around the arena. There were several moments where, where we were looking in the background and dudes were just leaving. They were just <laughs> yeah, yeah, walking yeah. out for no good reason. Uh, they, they curtained off the majority of the building since I believe it seats 6,000 and they had 2,300 in the building as of this afternoon. And all these people just hated this show. Mm-hmm. And apparently the highlight of the evening, which nobody saw because we only saw the pay-per-view, was after the show there was a giant fight out in the parking lot. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Reportedly it was between, what did they say, punks and rednecks. I, I couldn't understand that message. but <laughs> A bunch of punks and a bunch of rednecks got in a fight. That sounds totally believable. The police were around the other side of the arena getting autographs or something like that or helping the wrestlers get out, and so nobody broke up this fight. And uh, some dude that saw it said it was far better than the Elimination Chamber. That was the well, highlight of the have, evening. You could have taken a shit in a bag and then ate it, and it would have been better than the Elimination Chamber match. <laughs> Let me write that, that one down for... <laughs> hey, we got this, all these weapons. This poetry must be recorded. Not, we're not going to use any of them. We'll that, use the crowbar for a second. You know, and he's just, very you know, angry about the like Elimination Chamber. we're going to push it into somebody's head. Hold on a minute. We're getting ahead of us here. We're, all right, all we're, right, we're still sorry. on this shitty, uh, or this opener, which actually was not shitty. It was just too long. Yeah. Well, I had M and M. Like, who are these jokers? Where the hell did they come from? They've been around. Well, for they a while. were tag team champions off and on for about a year. Yeah, but I, I heard about that. Mark I've heard is, this, but I don't understand. He like, is the perfect casual <laughs> fan. He just started tuning in last year, and he has just, no idea what's going on. Yeah, yeah. He's two losers with this whore that just screams all the time and it's like yo shut that bitch up it's crazy with that scream. she is horrible she screamed yeah. all night tonight and then she got kicked in the face which was the best part of the match she did get kicked in the face by john i didn't by see her the boyfriend replay. did johnny nitro kick her hard uh she was holding her nose and looked like uh, he hit her in the forehead oh okay. so i don't think he, she's dead or anything but may just be getting a nose job it, it would be amusing if she had a giant bruise in her forehead and tried, had to tell people my boyfriend kicked me in the face that's right <laughs> that'll fly <laughs> There were a bunch of 34, 34-year-old executives in the crowd chanting, she's a crack whore. It sounded yeah. nothing like the old ECW. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was like the most offensive part of the evening. Like all these idiots trying to start the old ECW, you know, the old ECW chants. And it's like, who the hell are you people in Atlanta, Georgia? Like, what are you fucking trying to pull off here? Georgia. Just terrible i mean the, the, the other the other horrible thing about this show is not only was it nothing like the old ecw it wasn't even like the new fake ecw they didn't even dim the lights even, it wasn't even like any of the shitty wwe shows it was <laughs> it was sub wwe it was velocity it, it was it like reminded me of when i used to go see the japanese pool boy wrestle in a fucking church hall like that's what it was you've been to the new alhambra arena the former <laughs> yeah, ecw arena piss hole. how is <laughs> you didn't like it uh, it's it's the same place it's just like you know they've made it look nicer but you know you walk in the bathroom and it's covered with piss everything's covered in piss like it's the same shitty dump just a they gross just, building renamed I, I will say that the one tiny little thread of 
authentic ECW was when when Taz got off the line. They were talking about Melina needing to take a cold shower, and Taz says something like. In this building, that's all I could take is a cold shower. <laughs> There's no hot water yes. here in uh, in Georgia. So anyway, the uh, uh, like you said, Nitro drop kicked Melina, and then yeah, uh, they nice. they stacked the two dudes on top of each other, and Jeff crushed yeah, them. Kind of, you know, it was a little gay, fruity, kind of homo homoerotic. Yeah. That's right. And then a big senton crushed both guys, pinned them. Last few yeah. minutes were good, but this match just was. This match went on so long that I seriously thought they're giving they're they're having two matches and they're both going to be an hour and a half long. Yeah, it went so long that I could feel myself aging <laughs> while it was going on. It was, it, it was, it was uh, when the show was over. We were driving home and I said it, uh, the show started with a not half bad tag match and went downhill. And that's the best way I can think of this. It was not half bad. For, it was not. It was for twenty three minutes. None of us complained about it, but we weren't enthralled. We were talking about the crowd and what was going on. The, the crowd was the most fun of the evening. And yeah. it's always <laughs> like that with EC. And, and, and at least when they go to New York, it's funny because they all have these funny chants. This crowd was funny because, A, there was nobody there. B, they were a bunch of folks from Georgia watching Extreme Championship Wrestling, which wasn't even the real ECW. They were leaving. They were leaving. They were, they were just sitting there being themselves. Yeah, they, they were. It, this was like an indie show with a bunch of uh, WWE guys that just happened to show up, including the folks in the second match, an unannounced match, believe it or not. One of four unannounced matches. <laughs> That's two-thirds of the card. Balls Mahoney and Matt Stryker. Oh, that, that gem. What what was the uh, <laughs> what was the uh, promo that, that Matt Stryker cut? Because I went um, to update the website. We forwarded through it. Uh, we, we did, in fact. about him, him wanting all the rules to be followed. I don't know. I, I, I think Craig actually watched this before we got there because he, he TiVo'd it and then we watched the TiVo recording. But <laughs> Craig did skip through most of the promo, but he assured us that Matt Stryker insisted that the, they would extremely follow the rules. So, yes, it was an extremely scientific bout. Second yeah. on the card in Georgia. With Balls Mahoney. Like, the next time they should just, like, do math problems against <laughs> each other and see how that works out. I would pay to watch Balls Mahoney try and do math. I bet, <laughs> I swear to Christ that if Matt Stryker and Balls Mahoney had a math contest, I bet you anything Balls would win. I just have this funny <laughs> feeling. They should have a spelling bee at the next it could be. Matt Stryker's a history way teacher. More so more fucking entertaining than anything that happened tonight. Maybe they could play Hangman. The story of this match was Matt Stryker's tights had his ass, or his head was on his own ass. Yeah, yeah but it was halfway up his ass, his, his, so you couldn't even see the face. And the, they kept showing close-ups of it. Like, I want to see this dude's ass crack all night. Yes, he had a super wedgie. I, I was thinking during this match, who writes this stuff? And thinks it's going to get over with this audience. With nobody, anyone. Nobody wrote this tonight. I, I can't imagine that somebody, they sat around and thought that tonight would have been a good idea. The, well, there is, I, there is that argument. But somebody, <laughs> somebody had this idea of let's put his ass or his face on his ass and make jokes about his crack. Yeah, I, yeah. Who was it? That Whatever. Thought... If that's what people want to, if that's entertainment, I guess. I don't know. So yeah, this that's, was a that's sports entertainment. It was right a there. dud. Uh, it sucked a cock was the exact word I used here in the uh, report. That's Balls good. Mahoney looked like Vader compared to Matt Striker. Matt Striker was so fucking horrible. This was a match where dudes were just walking out, yep, just leaving, <laughs> and had enough. It was hideous. This match was a thumbs down. For historical purposes, we should note that Balls won. Balls did win. Balls yeah. Balls won this match. And he Fine. was really selling that. His arm got hurt. Like, Stryker <laughs> really worked on that arm for a while. Stryker did a move. He was working for over good six or seven minutes. Yeah, he was working over the arm for a lot, and he did a move where he laid balls down and stretched his arm out, and then took a bump on the arm. Yeah. <laughs> this this was a... there's a reason no one's ever done this before. It looks dumb. <laughs> so then we cut to backstage, and Sabu had been laid out. Oh yeah, he got shanked in the back. <laughs> As I said in the car ride home, nails broke out of prison. Nails. We thought it was, he couldn't find the big boss man's corpse, so he just stabbed, Jesus. you know, Sabu in the back. We thought it may have been New Jack as well. He might. Oh have, yeah, that that was the other theory. <laughs> and he escaped while he still had a chance, because mm -hmm. down there in Georgia, yeah, things, yeah. things can get dangerous. So they they laid him out, and the the, the cops or whoever was going, he's unresponsive. And apparently in my uh, pay-per-view report on the website, I accidentally typed, he's unresponsible, which uh, I'm not sure which is it's actually funnier. funnier, whether he's unresponsive or unresponsible. He, um, Sabu may not be long for the ECW world. I don't know for sure, but 
The this fact, certainly seemed like a... The fact I, that he was carted out in the middle of the show by a mystery man who nobody gave a shit that there was a madman backstage laying out Sabu. There's and, a homicidal maniac, uh, bad choice of words, but there's a killer backstage <laughs> taking out pro wrestlers. No one seemed to care. No one cared. They were just, they were just worried, what, is, is Sabu still employed? That's the look they had on their faces as he was being loaded into the ambulance. And God knows, because they took him out of this match, so we shall see, but he was taken I away. I would have put him in the match just to, you know try to kill him again like they did with the Umanga match. <laughs> you know, That's, he, he was killed by Umanga on Raw, and uh, they didn't even let him get in the cage to get killed. They killed him before he even got there. Which may be for the best in the long run. Well, I guess they figured they weren't going to use those weapons in the cage anyway. That's... So they might as well have just fake killed him backstage and just sure. fixed on the whole thing. So Sabu was taken away, and he never returned. Yep. <laughs> just gone forever. Why would he? So that's <laughs> that's actually a fine fine question. Sabu reminded Why me of come back? Buddy last night trying to not be seen after the, after just, Caden's show. D- 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 his, he, he put did. his hood up and he he hid and he just got the fuck out of the building as fast as humanly possible. You don't want anyone to know he was there. You didn't no. want to be associated with this garbage. Then we had Elijah Burke and Sylvester Turkai versus the FBI. Yeah, that was another fantastic tag battle. Another right another unannounced fantastic tag battle. Elijah was wearing a red hat. Yeah, that was the highlight of the match, really. That, that's true, it, it was. was. Elijah, hat. as usual, was they the highlight played, of the match. They played keep away yeah, with his red hat. Yeah, put it on. Hilarious. Yeah. Fun. <laughs> this, this was actually the match where Taz made the comment about the, the no hot water in this building here in Augusta, Georgia. And, oh, yeah, because uh, Trinity was wearing that ridiculous outfit, whatever it She was. may have well have been nude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was pretty whatever. much naked. There were... Uh, Where's my pizza? You still suck. Someone had a Joey Styles is my homeboy sign. That's that's funny. <laughs> they, not really. They uh, Joey dis- Styles. He's a complete idiot. You're not a big fan of Styles. <laughs> not anymore, man. Is, he's his whole commentating skills is just they just. Uh, Did he sell out? Was that the problem? Ugh. Well, I got a real problem with a lot of this. ECW shit. Like, you can tell that some of the wrestlers, like, they're just not into it. Like They don't that. care. You, you could tell Sabu the announcers were not into it tonight. And you're like, why wouldn't Sabu go to sleep backstage? Like, <laughs> this shit sucks, you know? The, but, you know, Joey's out there trying to sell it and everything. And it's like, Joey, you know, just shut up. Just... Because you're not, you're not fucking fooling any of us, you motherfucker. <laughs> This this was an evening where it seemed like both Joey Styles and Taz were absolutely hating life and just putting on a happy face, just trying to pretend like everything was fine. Joey Styles dropped a line about how something would be the last time he did something in his suddenly short career. Yeah. <laughs> the writing's on the wall, I think. They yeah, had a and Joey also announced right at the beginning of the pay per view that there would be a new champion. He did, in fact, say he did. That. He said yeah. tonight. I don't know if anybody caught that. Oh, we all did. Everyone in this room, anyway. Yeah, he goes, uh, tonight a new champion is going to be crowned in the Elimination Chamber. And we all yeah, thought, and they good one. They took a shot of him and Taz, and Taz looked kind of confused <laughs> about Joey saying that. Like, yeah, you kind of blew it there, style. There yep. Go. Live TV. This, uh, this, this match featured a Jeff Jarrett stroke, a Samoa yep. Joe muscle buster, and yep. afterwards there were people chanting TNA. You don't say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amazingly. This blew. Then we had Daivari versus Tommy Dreamer, the highlight of which was the Great Kali. As usual. The Great yeah. Kali was out there, and he got ejected for, I don't even know what happened. Something. He was over the height limit. He, he, <laughs> he may have been too tall to go on this ride. Or... But his his acting really sold the match. Oh, yeah. He, 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 they, they, the, the referee points to the back, and Great Kali just stood there and looked at him like he had no and idea what was going they on. Don't, they don't he just pointed point... at the referee. Like, <laughs> yeah, they don't the referee use... says, go in the back, and he's like, you. <laughs> you know, like, what, what the fuck does that mean? Perhaps they don't use pointing in India. He didn't know what it meant. I want to see Kali versus Giant Gonzalez. <laughs> now, that'd be a match. You're the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I actually would have a perverse desire to see that match, but it's not happening anytime soon. You know I would say ever. Really you know, actually, here's a... Here's terrible a, way. Is here, it? Here's a sad tale. Giant yeah. Gonzalez is wheelchair-bound. Yes. Oh, I thought you were going to say he was dead. 
I, I well, actually it could to, be worse. I had to think there for a moment. No, if, I read that too. If he was actually dead, but he is—he is no, he's in a wheelchair. He's yeah. so he will not be wrestling the great Kali. But Kali did in fact point at the referee, and they yelled back and forth and pointed at each other for like a minute before <laughs> Kali finally left. And without Kali there, this was such bullshit. Tommy Dreamer was—he's uh, fat. Nobody cares. I guess the idea is he always loses, so it made sense for him to lose here, but. He went for his DDT, and uh, Daivari slipped out and schoolboyed him and grabbed the tights, and ECW he died. He grabbed his belt. He did grab his belt. Yeah, basically grabbed the tights. You know, the theory is you were grabbing the tights and holding on for leverage. Daivari just placed his hand. At the, the, it was the... like your idea of a, a tights with handles. Kind of. <laughs> he, just... there was no, he wasn't even pulling, though. His hand was just there. He just put his Maybe hand. Maybe he was just copying a feel. It, it may, he may have been just trying to grab his ass, yeah. and, and that was the pinfall, but... This sucks. Oh, my God, this is awful. Yeah, it was... What do you think of old Tommy Dreamer really these days? Good. Oh, we forgot to mention that afterwards, Tommy Dreamer went up on the ramp, and the great Kali gave him a tree slam onto the cement. Onto the stage. <laughs> the stage. Yeah. And Tommy... Well. It, yeah, same difference. The point is it's, it's a hard, stiff, inflexible structure, and Tommy Dreamer's body bounced off it. And I thought, why the fuck would you do that on this show? This ain't WrestleMania no. where you're in front of millions. This, won't not... this is ECW in front of a uh, one-third filled building of 2,000 fans in Augusta fucking Georgia, and you just had a shitty match on the world's shittiest pay-per-view, and you fucking took that bump on the steel. What were you thinking? He will feel that for the rest of his life, and no one's going to remember it. <laughs> Nobody can. I forgot till I was reading my own report here. This poor fucker. <laughs> Dreamer's for real, man. What oh, yeah. He's for real. He is, right. in fact, hardcore. <laughs> Yeah, that's what they say, I guess. So Heyman met with Hardcore Holly <clears throat> and suggested he take Sabu's place. Oh, Holly was... Spark Plug Holly? Yeah, Sparky Plug. You remember Sparky Plug? Oh, fuck yeah. What a stupid gimmick that was. <laughs> you know, they... what are we talking about in the car? You were just listing wrestlers and asking, Hey, Mark, what did you think about? And we put a name in. Yeah, and, and what you, did you think about the one two three kid? Yeah, remember the one two three oh, kid? Oh yeah, you remember that shit when he beat Razor Ramon? That was so lame. You re- so you remember that? Yeah, I remember Mark Waltman <laughs> very well. I can tell. Yeah. I remember uh, we downloaded that porno that it was in China, and it was just like I've seen some horror movies in my life, but that was the scariest fucking shit I've ever seen. <laughs> you actually watched One Night in China. I watched about two seconds of it. You are so much more hardcore than I could China ever be. China had a bigger penis than him, and I was like, all right. Enough, enough. enough of that. <laughs> I am down. I agree. We've been trying to get Vince to to review that for the newsletter, and he he has thus far uh, refused. Come so, on, don't be a pussy. Yeah, don't be <laughs> a pussy, Vince. Jesus. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Tell tell about <laughs> didn't when didn't Bergen already review that anyway? Tell him about the time you saw a comma. <laughs> wow, you mean when I I you were confused? Yeah. He, he was Papa Shango, and then I didn't watch wrestling. He was Papa Shango when I was like twelve, and then I started watching wrestling again, like. You know, right around the Attitude Era started, whatever. I think it was around that time. But, you know, the nation is hanging out, whatever that whole deal was. And I see Kama, you know, out there, and I'm like, that's Papa Shango. What's he doing? Why isn't he shrinking heads? Or making he wasn't shrinking heads. He, what was he, the uh, the extreme fighting machine? Yeah, yeah, something along those lines. He was and then the, he became he... a pimp, which, you know, that's a... That's a good progression. You know, <laughs> From a trainer. voodoo man to an extreme fighting machine to a pimp. Yeah. To the boogeyman. And, uh, and then and then he was, you know, that whole right to censor thing went on, and he was uh, the good father then. He was Jesus Christ, I'd totally forgotten that. It <laughs> totally blocked it out of <laughs> my mind. It's unfortunate that I remember that. That's, there's a part of my brain that remembers that, and I'm never going to be able to fill that part of my brain with just, any just, other knowledge. Just kill their brain then. Just, oh. <laughs> that... That may be... Try to drink that knowledge away. Then we had Mike Knox and Kelly Kelly versus yeah. the vampire and his girl. This match happened. This this <laughs> occurred. And I would like to note that that, that uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about what happened, and then I'm going to let Mark go because he loved this more than anything on the show, believe it or not. He jumped out of this... He jumped off the couch. Let me tell you what happened. They had this shitty match. Mike Knox and the vampire did a bunch of shit, and nobody cared. It was horrible. They tagged in the two girls who were even more horrible. And yeah. Ariel, who is not very attractive and not in the best shape in the world, 
had all of the folks in Augusta, Georgia going nuts. And that tells you something. I don't know what it tells you, but that tells you something right there about they, this they match. They were into seeing her ass, I guess. They were yeah. into seeing her ass. Yep. And finally, young Kelly, who earlier had wished CM Punk luck over the house, Mike, crawled over to get the tag, and Mike Knox jumped <laughs> off the apron, and Mark Jones jumped off the couch, screaming, and I quote, Shades of Hogan and Sid. You were so excited. Oh, we had just been talking about it in the car, and then it happened again. <laughs> it was like a trip down memory lane. It really was. It was a trip down memory lane to that horrible fucking feud between Hogan and Sid. That was oh. horrid stuff. Yeah, I mean, whatever. Sid was involved. I mean, what are you going to do? You weren't a big fan of Sid. Just, d- d- just, can't polish a turd, I guess. So Ariel pinned Kelly, and uh, that was that. And the place, uh, I don't even know what happened. Oh, Sandman came out, and he destroyed the vampire with cane yeah, shots. That, and, and that made tons of sense, because isn't he in a feud with Stryker right now? Like No one knows. Is, is that still happening? No, I don't even know I, what's I don't know. going on. No one knows what's going on. I don't on. know. <laughs> all, all we know is Sandman was supposed to face Bob Hawley, supposedly, but then uh, Sabu got uh, canned or whatever's happened to him, and, and, and uh, Holly was, he was put in the cage. He did. He, he got uh, cut. And uh, then ended up with this bullshit of Sandman coming out and beating up the vampire. And I will say, this was the only thing on the show that seemed like ECW because everybody was going nuts and chanting ECW as he beat this fucker with a cane. Yeah, Sandman is always kinda, great. It was kind of just sad. <laughs> it really was sad. The, the like, sadness not hit me this until is later. What it's resulted to is this, like, man, yeah, the Sandman's out there all withered and beaten up. <laughs> not <laughs> really he drinking light beer, near beer. <laughs> yeah, and he's keen a vampire named Kevin. <laughs> he's keen uh, a vampire named Kevin. The like, vamp. I will and just. Where did the girls go while Kevin was getting the shit kicked out of? No him? one knows. They just went they away. Just... <laughs> they went underneath the ring and were, they were trying to find Finley's midget, I guess. Could be. That's the best explanation yeah. I have. That's a better yeah. explanation than much of the stuff on this show, actually. All I have to say about this match is that, well, two things. One, Mike Knox totally sucks, and you can tell when the vampire is completely out working him in the ring. But the best worker <laughs> in this match, from the apron, was young Miss Kelly Kelly. Oh, yeah. She was playing cheerleader. Oh, yes, that's right. And... and, yeah. and <laughs> I forget what happened. Knox was getting beat up, and then he came back with a body slam or a forearm or some other rudimentary move, and <laughs> you could hear from the apron, How do you like that? Ha ha! <laughs> she was... Kelly is the only person in the ring who cared about what's going on. She was the only person in the fucking building. That's true. <laughs> she was the only person in the fucking world that cared. She really was. So, yes, Kelly has improved by leaps and bounds. I, I should note that when Sandman came out, the defining moment of this pay-per-view was the two fat guys in the front row that high-fived each other and both held up their inflatable Sandman <laughs> Singapore canes. Yeah, that's sad. E-C-Dub. That E-C-Dub. Inflatable Singapore canes, that makes sense. Michael Cole appeared on the big screen and hyped up the pay-per-view that's coming up in two weeks. I swear to God, he hyped up the SmackDown Every- pay-per-view. Everybody in the background was just booing their ears off or their, their whatever, their ass off, and it was horrible. It was like... They didn't even finish the show. They were like, okay, we all know this show sucks, but don't worry. We got a better one in two weeks. Yeah, but it's not going to be better. Well, <laughs> Oh, I don't know. <laughs> they got a hard I, act I to follow. I think it's going to be just on par with, you know, every shitty pay-per-view we've seen this fucking terrible year. This, this was bad. We had uh, Rebecca, who, speaking of bad, and oh, yeah. boy, <laughs> she was a diamond in the rough on this fucking show. <laughs> She interviewed Lashley, and... And it was a battle of the lists. <laughs> so I, I, I don't know who pointed it out, but they may actually have the same voice. They, they, <laughs> they, they may have had, Someone may have been off screen throwing their voice. It That's may have true. been Kelly Kelly actually sure. doing the, the dialogue for both of them. But listen, Lashley is a horrible promo, and when you need somebody to carry you in a promo, Rebecca fucking DiPietro is the last person you call on to do this job. And she was horrible... He was Who horrible. She? She's I've a never playmate. I've seen her in my fucking life. Who the fuck is she? She was a former playmate who did was the she Diva in one Search. Of those competitions to be on yep. WWE? She got that cut was... from the Diva Search and she started uh, banging Big Dave. And next thing you know, she's got a job in ECW. Was it the most recent Diva Search? I believe those, so. All those girls were just dumb as bricks. That's <laughs> true. We, they, we did not have <laughs> the cream of the crop. That shit. 
Yeah, this was not the best diva search, but she she ended up with a job, so what the hell can you do? This, this promo resulted in our buddy Sean making fun of Lashley and calling him gay. Yeah. That's not what you That's want bad. for a casual fan. <laughs> Heyman came out with his security dudes to cut a promo for the main event, which was already coming up. Now, normally, yeah. every ECW pay-per-view, Heyman at least gets to come out and cut just a great promo, just something wacky, just talking about this, that, and the other thing. This one, he just came out, and he's like, boy... Big Cage. He came out and he fucking explained the match like nobody fucking knew already. <laughs> Come on, motherfucker. We've been watching the fucking show. You've explained it a hundred times. You don't need to come out and cut a promo to tell me what the fuck's about to happen. <laughs> everybody knew it was going to happen in the end anyway. Like, Lashley's going to win. Like, when he won, everybody, oh, that was fucking amazing. There was he really, no... He pulled out all the stops. <laughs> there were no secrets on this show. He explained this Except bullshit. Except for half of the card, that was the only secret. The best part of this was as he was explaining everything, everybody was just heckling him. There were folks chanting, yeah. where's the franchise? <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. You sold out. He, you sold out. He mentioned, the, the, he mentioned something about the big show, and somebody just screamed, who's going to retire next year? <laughs> and I thought, wow, nobody drank the Kool-Aid tonight. <laughs> this was yeah. the night the fucking Kool-Aid ran dry. <laughs> the ECW died. Has so, anybody been drinking that Kool-Aid? Which is the fucking stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, like, I felt like drinking whole, the fucking Kool-Aid during the show and wishing I was in Guyana. Thing is so Jesus. stupid. Like, just so fucking dumb. So what'd you think of that e elimination chamber there, Mark? Holy fuck. Like, <laughs> could there have been a worse match? Um, in history. I think probably. Besides, you know, that whole Giant Gonzalez and Undertaker thing that we talked about earlier. This yeah. was one of those matches where I watched it and I just thought, everybody watching this is getting more and more angry with each passing moment. <laughs> WWE has given everyone the big middle finger, and, and it was... Well, okay, here's what happened. Everybody came out, RVD and Tess started. RVD and Bob Holly. Oh, Bob Holly! Jesus Christ. Is that what was going on? Because I wasn't paying attention. Good. Well, join the club. Nobody was. But Bob Holly and RVD apparently started, and the other geeks were all in their little cells, and we had CM Punk with a chair. <clears throat> Big Show had the barbed wire bat. Test had the crowbar, which was very fitting. This is an old school term for a dude who's too stiff and sucks. And Lashley had the table. And it was five minutes, and the new pod would open and that sort of thing. And, and the first five minutes with Rob Van Dam and Bob Holly was not very good. RVD did a bunch of wacky shit. He landed on the metal. Bob had this look like, I would like to be anywhere in the world except in the ring with you, Rob. He would, he would rather be Sparky Plug. He probably would have uh, rather yeah. been Sparky Plug tonight than yeah. working Rob Van Dam. So the Rob first, Van Dam is awful anymore. He is horrible. He, he crushed, doesn't give a fuck. He, I hold him solely responsible for how ECW has turned out. And you know what? You mentioned that in the car today, and it's actually true. Because <laughs> Rob Van Dam was the guy that went to Vince McMahon and suggested bring this whole fucking thing back. And it's it's what it is today is all because of that conversation with Rob and Vince. So if you're going to point a finger, everybody, that was the beginning right there was that little conversation. I would so like to see Rob Van Dam and Vince McMahon having a business meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Those two guys sit down and let's talk shop. Yes. The, the first man out of his pod, as they called it, was CM Punk, who was probably the most over guy in the entire match. Mm -hmm. He was yeah, the hardest cool. worker in the whole match. Mm -hmm. And he was eliminated first. And quickly. Yes. I, did he make it the five minutes of the next pod open? He did because uh, actually, you know what? I don't know if he did. He he did not make it ten minutes, or he, excuse me, he, yeah, he did not last ten minutes. He may have lasted five. I, I don't remember. He was very quickly pinned. He was the first man eliminated. And it was funny because when he came out, everyone there was a big giant roar for CM Punk, CM Punk, and then the the RVD contingent kind of chanted RVD, RVD, and I thought, you know, I know Lash is going to win, but the best thing for this match would be for it to come down to those two. And then Punk got pinned. Yep, he made a comeback. Uh, RVD made a comeback, actually. Drop kicked the chair into his face, hit the frog splash, one, two, three. And I just thought, there you go. You know, CM Punk is not the best wrestler in the whole world. But like I said, he worked harder than anyone in this match. Mm -hmm. He, The people are getting behind this fucking guy. Yeah. And what do they do? They beat him first. And, and quickly. And rapidly. And everyone knew... <laughs> <laughs> so does that mean? Does that mean that uh, his undefeated streak is over? His, 
I well, they realistically, don't yes, but I don't they, know because you know they'll claim it was Manga not. got disqualified at <laughs> Survivor Series or Survivor Series. He is still Cyber undefeated. Series. What the fuck is that? But uh, <laughs> they'll say so it was not a one-on-one on one match, so it does not count. He's an asshole. Fuck that dude. Whatever. <laughs> So yes, the <clears throat> CM Punk was uh, eliminated first. There was a uh, chant of "Tests of Faggot." Yeah, there was a there, there was loud booing when Punk was pinned. Oh yeah, people La- were pissed. This this was the beginning of the end for this fucking match right here. And it was funny because it sucked. CM Punk came in, it was just totally fine, and then he was pinned, and it was all downhill. And uh, you and, know, and, and, and this show. Which sucked shortly after Punk. Not not exactly when Punk got pinned, but shortly thereafter. This show already sucked and then managed to dig a new hole to bury itself into. Yes. Yeah. Test booted Bob in the face. And, and then got a two, two count for the win. Yes, he, he pinned him with a two count. He covered him. The ref countered one. The ref countered two. Bob kicked out. Did he kick out? Yes, he lifted his shoulder. Oh, I didn't. I, they, I heard all three guys talking. They were asking, is this, is this it? Do we pin them here? Is and then I, I didn't see Bob kick out. I just saw the ref stop. There was no bell ringing. Yeah. There was no third count. And they all stood up and looked at each other, and the ref said, Okay, Bob, get out. <laughs> and he, he left. Looked, you, you gotta go, even though you weren't pinned. This later. was hideous. So then, Rob Van Dam and Tess are fighting, and it ends up with Tess climbing onto the top of the Big Show's cell and doing a fucking flying elbow on a Rob Van Dam, and he <laughs> landed ass to the head on Rob Van Dam. Chair. Yeah, there was chair a chair on room. Rob's face, and he sat on the fucking guy's head. And uh, Rob's dead too. He's hanging out with Sabu right him now. Him and Sabu may be sharing a hospital bed right now. <laughs> that was the end of Rob. He was pinned. So uh, now, the yeah. five minutes not elapsed yet. So this, at this point, Big Show was in a pod. Lashley was in a pod, and Test was hanging out in the ring. Test just hung out. He had nothing to do for like two minutes or something like that. So he's sitting there, and he's fucking around, this, that, and the other thing. And, and finally, it's time for Lashley to come out. But the uh, they beat up the ref, and they the uh, the dudes outside the ring don't let Lashley get out. They, they blocked his pod. They blocked his pod. Yeah. So he gets the table, and he breaks open the roof, and he climbs out. And it didn't get nearly the reaction you would expect for this man breaking free to fight. But he got in <laughs> he there He overcame with... the odds. <clears throat> he did. He overcame the odds, and no one gave a shit. Yeah, so, he broke the fake chain over top of his head. That's it. It was, the, it was totally mind-blowing. As Craig, <laughs> as, I, I teared up a little bit. As, as Craig noted, wow, the particle board table broke the steel chain. It did. Yeah. It, it was insane. So he, he was fighting with Test, and he ended up pinning him. And and then we had to wait. Yeah. There was now, another, now Lashley was waiting. Lashley was waiting. Paul Heyman gave Big Show this big pep talk. and Lashley he, had nothing to do, so he just picked up the weapons and just started... Juggling them, basically. So finally, Show's pod opens up, and he comes out with the big club looking like a fucking caveman. <laughs> Just coming right out of the cave, giant club, looking mean, and we look at the clock, and there's a half hour of pay-per-view time left. Big Show and Blaster Lashley in a barbed wire bat. And Big Show went in with the thing, and Lashley got a chair up, and then the fucking board got caught in the barbed wire. And was never used again. It got caught in the, uh, yeah, the cage. Yeah, the ref, like, took it away. Yeah, he just took it away and threw it down. Like, yeah, I know this is, like, a, an extreme rules kind of thing, but I'm going to take this bat so you well, guys well, don't hurt each other. Yeah, Big Show swung the bat, and he got <clears throat> caught in the cage. And, th- and then Show and, and, show and uh, Lashley started to fight, and Lashley rammed Show's head in the cage not three feet away from where the barbed wire was. <laughs> if you really wanted to hurt this guy, wouldn't you go for the pokey bits? I also liked how he could not break out of the plexiglass, and he had to climb out over the top, but then uh, immediately afterwards he was throwing folks through the plexiglass yeah, like it was nothing. Yes, Test and Big Show both knocked out the plexiglass like it's playing cards. Yes. <laughs> so this was where the fans were chanting, where's my refund, and shit like that. Yeah. And uh, anyway, it came down to uh, Big Show doing a clothesline. Lashley speared him. One, two, three. Yeah, the spear picked up the win. Wow. Two That's... hours and 17 minutes, the show ended. Lashley celebrated for like 10 seconds with his belt, walked out of the cage, walked to the back, faded And there were black. lots of fireworks as they stood there. They did. They, they even cut the fireworks. It was like they were rushed for time. We've got to get off the air before the two-hour and 20-minute mark. Yes. And that was the end. And that was it. And we all just sat there for a few seconds like, Jesus Christ, and what just happened? a little part of me died. A big part of you died. <laughs> I just... I was depressed. So it was. was and we, all, we were all like, wow, we're all getting up, getting our stuff, getting ready to go. We're all like, I'm not angry. I'm not 
entertained. I'm just bummed. Yeah, we all <laughs> just we all just left, and we were all. It was like sad. It's like God. That was like they just. It was like they killed the brand. They said fuck off to the fans. They made us pay for it. They killed Punk. They killed Punk. They killed Rob Van Dam. They literally killed Sabu. We had to watch the vampire, the fucking teacher, and Lashley is the ECW heavyweight champion of the world. Yeah. Mark, you have any final words for this uh, brand and Paul Heyman? Oh, fuck you, Paul Heyman. Just get fucked, you motherfucker. Like, way to have, like, the best wrestling program ever and then just sell it to fucking Vince McMahon. And blow that motherfucker like he needs it anymore. Was ECW the original, the greatest thing you ever saw? Yeah. Besides, like, female body parts, yeah, that was the greatest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> it basically meant the wrestling world, but... <laughs> <laughs> nothing nothing can touch the original ECW. No. And now it's dead. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we were able dead. to share that with you today. It was dead before they even did this again. We all knew what was going to happen. That that That's, is in fact no true. No fucking surprises here. So kids, thumbs down pay per view. Oh God! Do not purchase this show. <laughs> For the love of God, do not purchase the show. This is the worst pay per view of the year. Webcast and get three free matches. Oh yeah, make that point. I should make that point. I was on the WWE.com website today. And you could have bought the webcast of this pay-per-view for fourteen ninety five or whatever they charge for it. And when you when you buy a pay-per-view, you get some bonus matches. And they had a list of, that's right, three matches that you could get bonus, which was one match more than was announced for the actual live fucking pay-per-view this afternoon. Were they actually ECW matches? Yeah, they were like from back in the day. You should have bought oh. it for the fucking good ones. Well, they had I'm Cactus and Raven. for that. God damn. What did you think when you watched that? Uh, I, I gave you a DVD last time I saw you. It was, I think it was the first Barely Legal and uh, and uh, yeah, One Night barely, Stand. Barely Legal and the latest One Night Stand. What did you think when you watched all that? Like, that Barely Legal pay-per-view, like, it was, it was ridiculous. Like, it was old-school ECW. The Dudleys were the first match against... Uh, the Eliminators. Yeah, Conan. Cronus and Saturn. <laughs> yes. Yeah, there you go. Saturn, that's what I meant. That old... That Satellite? But, and then they just destroyed the Dudleys. But it was like, you know, watching it, like, wow, this is old ECW. It looks like shit, you know, the wrestlers are just killing each other. And then, like, you watch something like that, and then you watch Tonight's Thing, and you're like, I know Tommy Dreamer and, like, all the originals are, like, you know, they got to make a living. They got to get paid, but aren't they just... just Inside oh, yes. Yes. Like, don't they just feel awful? The answer to that question is yes. I can actually answer that question, yes. Rob Van Dam's ready to kill himself. Oh, I, I got a couple of notes from, from after the show went off the air for everybody. First off, as soon as it ended, Big Show was in the ring, and everybody chanted, thank you, show. And they gave him this big standing ovation, which no. actually, yeah, it, well, the thing is, it's his hometown. So, uh, oh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, oh, everybody, oh, everybody oh, knew he was oh. leaving. They uh, gave him the big standing ovation, that sort of thing. And apparently, after Rob Van Dam was eliminated, there was a giant TNA chant, and one of the individuals chanting TNA was, in fact, Rob Van Dam's wife. <laughs> so uh, the rumors that Rob Van Dam hates life and is ready to go to TNA, I can tell you he hates life. <laughs> That's for damn sure. I can tell you he would rather be in TNA. I do not actually know if his contract is up in the next six months. I was under the impression he'd re-sign a long-term deal. But I'll pretty much tell you, if his contract is up in six months or a year and TNA's still around, that fucking guy's gone. Yeah. Especially after this. Yeah, especially after the night. He, he was on his way, and he fucked it all up with his uh, drug arrest. And, uh, you know, TNA has a stringent drug policy, but it's probably not something that he has to worry too much about. So, uh, yeah, I, and he'd have freedom to just do all his shitty, wacky moves and craziness. <laughs> he can do all the moves he that wants. that crazy, wild ring they have over there. He can do the God, crazy, wild I fucking hate that ring. You... I would watch TNA if not for their stupid fucking ring. I tried to explain this to you as someone who does not watch TNA, but in the list of a hundred things bad about <laughs> TNA... The ring ain't even on the list. But I can't even get over it. Like, I'll turn it on. I'll see it. And I'll be like, maybe I'll watch And then they got oh, the fucking ring. There it is. And you're like, oh, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, I know you're trying to be different, but god damn it. Like, you harbor a deep resentment for this here ring. 
I really hate that fucking ring. Do you just hate and, the number? Know, for the longest time, Jeff Jarrett, Double J. You know, he was the fucking. He's the he's the man now, dog in there, and it's like fucking Double J. Who gives a fuck about him? <laughs> well, that's true. Nobody actually. Nobody does give a fuck about him. The answer is that nobody gives a fuck about him. But yes, Rob Van Dam's wife chanting for TNA. So uh, if she wears the pants, he's gone for good. So Sabu, I think his days are uh, numbered. In and fact, that number may be zero. The number may be zero <laughs> as of tonight. I don't know for sure. Well, but he's dead, guys. He he may Didn't that may actually be. He's dead. That may he be the, the the only the only problem is I think WWE already put up an update and said he's alive. In fact, oh, did they? yeah, let me read it for you here. I believe. What, what, did they does, put does, up who stabbed him? Does it say he Sabu is alive? We wish him the best in his future endeavors. No, Sabu injury update. <laughs> ECW extremist Sabu was taken to a nearby medical center facility in uh, Augusta, Georgia, after being attacked tonight at December to his member. He was evaluated and released. <laughs> But Even not, though he was unresponsive earlier. But not in time to compete in the Extreme Elimination Chamber. Okay, hang on. <laughs> so Sabu was unconscious when we saw him. We saw he him was a, a second. corpse when we saw him. He was a corpse when we saw him. He was unresponsive. When they loaded unresponsible. Him, when they loaded him into the ambulance 15 minutes later, he was still unconscious and not responsive. Yet, two hours go by and, and you're fine. He was evaluated and released. Here, have a bear. That's right. <laughs> Sabu's okay, everybody. Don't Here, worry about it. Have some pills, Sabu. <laughs> have we some, know you love pills. Have some fucking pills. My <laughs> God in heaven. This was a bad show, kids. Don't buy this pay-per-view. This may have been, and I know everyone's some will throw up an example, but this may have been the worst pay-per-view since Heroes of Wrestling. It's got to <laughs> be way up there. It's. I, 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 I've seen shitty shows, but none that just left me feeling this empty and abused. <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just amused that like we saw we saw it was like watching Faces of Death. We just saw an execution right here. Yeah. I'm angry that I paid so much money for it. I feel bad for the poor fuckers that were involved. Well, you asked a great question on the way home. Who was the target target audience of the show? I don't know. Who was supposed to enjoy it? It, it wasn't ECW fans no? because Mark here is the hardest of the hardcore, and he hated this uh, show with a passion. I wouldn't really say I was the hardest of the hardcore, but. You're you know, pretty hard. You were a hardcore fan, and you hated I, the show. I liked the old ECW, you know. It was okay, so enjoyable. it's not the ECW fans. It ain't the TNA fans. No, fuck no. It ain't the Raw yeah, fans. Yeah, they don't have a fucking six-sided ring. <laughs> it ain't. Know, cause that makes sense. Do, do you just hate the number six? I do you, like, avoid the six-pack and go move on to the 12-pack? I don't know. We've had this discussion. I don't know what to tell you, but that ring just makes it whole. It makes it look like a fucking circus act, like... It's a joke. Like, they should have clowns running around. <laughs> well, they but do. I guess they, they do have some fucking clowns running around over there, like, Christian. Fuck that, dude. <laughs> you have the strangest hatred of all for the this people <laughs> in TNA to call a clown you chose Christian. Well, he doesn't watch it, so he well, only knows that's true. That's fair. Ship. That's fair. That's fair. Believe me, if well, you watch this show, Christian would also be low on the list of clowns in this particular company. Who was the first clown you thought of? Russo. I thought of Sanjay. And he doesn't even run well, around. I thought of Sanjay Dutt. I thought of was Doink the Clown. Well, that's true. I he's, wish they'd bring him back. He and would be the best worker in TNA, great. perhaps, at this point. But uh, Matt Bourne, Jesus. Anyway, yep, <laughs> the, the uh, Raw fans would hate it. The SmackDown fans would hate it. The ECW fans would hate it. The TNA fans would hate it. The fucking UFC fans would want to kill somebody. I don't know who would want to watch this show. The only people I can think of are the people who Bobby Lashley is their favorite wrestler. And I don't know if there are those people. No. <laughs> They're not in Augusta. Here, here's the future, kids. ECW's dead. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to do with this TV time slot. They already killed the house shows. They fucking killed all the old ECW stars. The fact that they only announced two matches, held it in Augusta, Georgia, only had 2,000 people there, didn't give a rat's fucking ass about anything on the show, tells you they don't care. And when they don't care, this thing is one step away from being Velocity. That's all there is to it. ECW is dead as of tonight. Period. I'm, I'm still trying to figure out why it was in Georgia. Be, you know, because like, they wanted it to fail. Yeah, they just. <laughs> I, I I watched this show and that's what I thought. It's like this whole show was all setting up ECW to die. It was a public execution. It. I swear to Christ, it was. They they killed the brand tonight, and we had to pay forty bucks to watch it. That pisses me off. Yeah. The show was just and, shitty. I see a lot of shitty it, shows. It was a half hour short, which was... 
We, we that, that, that was nothing in disguise. That was the other great question. Do you yeah. feel ripped off or thankful that it ended a yeah. half hour early? Are you early? mad that, the, that you got a half hour less of this shit? Are you, are you mad that it went off the air a half hour early? I don't know the answer. I, I think I would have paid extra money. To have I it I definitely know the elimination chamber match. I definitely know. I'm happy it was not another half hour. Oh yeah, I couldn't but handle it, another it, half hour. I, I I was reading something this week about sunk costs. <laughs> you know, once we paid for the pay per view, we're not getting the money back, so, so yeah. there's no point in making it longer than it had to be. They should have just ended after the Hardys match, just took it home. It did for many people. Yes. They left. There were many people leaving after the Hardys match, so. Uh, I, I still like the Mike Knox thing when he walked away. That was funny to me. It, it was just so. Can, funny. can you describe. Uh, you, you really glazed over it because you really reacted when that happened. You were very happy when Mike Knox left oh, Kelly Kelly in the ring. It killed me. Because it, it just, oh, you know, it just, it was the same exact thing as Hogan and Sid, and it just looked the same. Like, w- w- which I, does, they used the same camera angles, I think. It was amazing. Was it, it, just it because, does beg the question, which one's Hogan? Oh, that's that's a good question. <laughs> which one's Sid? Yeah. Which one's, Mike Knox is Sid. Mike Knox is... Because Kelly Kelly's got charisma. Yeah. Yeah, of the two, Kelly is better, therefore Mike Knox is Sid, but Sid is worlds above Mike Knox. So kids, thumbs down, do not buy the replay. That, by the way, is a Sid of 2006 who can't walk without a cane. Do not buy the DVD. Do not download this. Don't even download it for free. No, no. Because you're wasting three hours of your life. You're wasting precious RAM. Go I out and... Two hours and 17 minutes. Drink. Go out and drink or go get something to eat or go to the gym or do any fucking thing in this world. Have sex. Anything. Don't sit watch outside, this fucking show. Sit outside in the dirt. Sure. Yeah, go roll in the mud. Go. Yeah, go. Let's... If it's raining out, just go out there and get wet. Go climb a yeah. tree. Do anything but watch this fucking Fly show. Fly a kite. Stare Finger... at a wall for a few hours. Finger painting. Stare at a wall for three hours. At least it's a form of meditation. Organize yeah. your spices. That's right. I don't... <laughs> I don't know. Learn how to knit. <laughs> yes, craft work. Learn well, how to you, knit. You know what? Instead of watching it, you should just write your own WWE angle. And it would be better. Just, yeah, just, 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 you know, just think just, up your own plot lines. That'll be way more fun. Buy a video game and just plot that. That's yeah. right. There Kids, we're, we're, we're done for the day. I, I cannot talk any more about this or I will really kill myself. I've got a throbbing headache. Mark, I want to thank you for doing the show today. Hey, Very, no problem. You are awesome, Mark. Exciting time. Always good yeah. to get the perspective of somebody that hates his shit and doesn't watch all of it. Just <laughs> watches their one show a week. On I was the, introduced uh... to Mark at, at the, uh, the the Cyber Sunday when he, he climbed into my car and you said, Vince, this is my friend Mark. He hates wrestling. <laughs> I thought, well, he'll fit in fine with his crew. And yes, he he hates wrestling. Hey, do you want to plug your band? Uh you know, we're not really a band anymore. We broke up like a year yeah, ago. Yeah, but you're doing a reunion when you return. But if you want to hear Dismember the Body, go to MySpace.com, www.myspace.com, backslash Dismember the Body. And, and you can check hear, it out. I suppose. <laughs> we may open up the show with some Dismember the Body for the uh, Raw show if it totally sucks. So, uh, yeah. Fantastic. That'll be the plan. Well, thanks, dude. And uh, no thanks, problem, Alvarez. Thanks, everybody, for listening. We'll be back tomorrow talking uh, Raw, which... Uh, if there's a God, we'll be better than this show. <laughs> if it's not, I quit. And, uh, yeah, we'll talk to you guys then. Bye.